Welch and I am a second grade teacher in Oklahoma. Welcome to Parent Teacher Conferences Night. Our school actually does this on two different nights. This is night one of two. But funny enough, my families have all signed up for two night only and absolutely no one has signed up for the one that we're having next week. So this might be my only real conference night. In the spring, we're doing this. This is spring conferences night. We also have conferences in the fall. Luckily at my school, spring conferences are only for students who are in academic concern or students who are scoring below a certain percentile on a computerized reading test. Sometimes the students might score low, but really are not concerned and they just didn't test well. So we still have to meet with those families, but if they scored above that score, the conferences are considered optional. So I only have one family I'm meeting with who wanted to meet even though their students scored above that academic range. So I only have about 11 conferences, which is about half my class. So that's what we have tonight. I have made the schedule for my conferences. This is a freebie that I will link in the description. And as you can see, next week there's absolutely no one signed up. So that's pretty funny. The good thing about conferences at our school, they do provide dinner. So yay for that. And in this video, I'm just gonna take you through what I usually do for conferences. And just gonna show you all the things that I do to help me feel really prepared and ready because conferences go quickly and they're so valuable because the families are coming to meet with you about their most precious commodity, which is their child. And they wanna hear all the things and they need to know the good and the bad and they need to know what to work on. So you really wanna make them valuable for the family's time, but you have to keep things moving and get through as much as you can quickly. We are lucky we get 15 minutes at my past school. I always tried to squeeze in 20 if possible if I had a small enough class because that time just flies by, honestly, especially if someone's running a little bit behind and it pushes the conference time back. So 15 minutes is still gonna fly, but I know some schools only do 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna show you what I do and what I think is most important to do so that even if you have a really small window of time, like 10 minutes, you can still get through most of these things and have a great conference with your family. So let's get into what I do. So this is a fake student folder. I used my nephew's name. So this is my pretend student Lewis's folder just so that I can show you everything. And I always have a little conference cover on the front to give the families a snapshot. When they first sit down to me, I just start conversationally asking how they are, talking about anything fun upcoming in class, and then we just sit down and get right into it. So I say, okay, I'm going to start by showing you your student's quarterly reflection. And then we'll get into their scores. That's usually how I start out. So we get out that quarterly reflection that looks like this. In the reflection, the families get to see what subjects their child is like learning about, what some of their favorite things that we do in class are. And then every student will set a goal. They'll have something that challenged them, a goal for how to conquer that challenge, and a plan for how they can be successful. So we talk about that. Students do this at the end of each quarter. So we only do conferences twice. So when they do it at the end of second quarter, I send it home. And when they're doing it at the end of this school year, I'll just send that one home too. But the first quarter one I save so I can use that at fall conferences. And the third quarter one I save so we can do it at spring conferences. On the back is one of the most valuable parts where they give themselves a self score on different behaviors that I want them to be doing in class. And then I write a little note to give my reflections on how they scored themselves. Typically students are very honest and I feel like their scores are either harsher than I would give or accurate. Small time on occasion will have students rank themselves a little higher in areas than I think, but that just is a great icebreaker opening the door for conversation and allows the families to see the classroom through their students' eyes. Really good way to start off the conference. If you're short on time, I would maybe skip the first side and just focus on how they feel they're doing behaviorally because I feel like this is the hearts. We want families to know not just academics, but how is their child doing in their character? I feel like that is truly a huge role of teachers is building students' character. And I personally feel that character building is even 
more important than the academics. So this is definitely something I want the families and I to chat about because if they have amazing grades but terrible character, that is a huge red flag. But if they have amazing character and poor grades, that's a red flag too, but it's a different weight because we want to raise students that have amazing character. So I feel like this is really what the families can help me work on even more than the academics. Both are important, but I would rather raise a child to have amazing character and for them to struggle in their grades than vice versa. So definitely would talk about that with your families. Because we have conferences tonight, before the families will even come, I will also send home this conference reminder. This is just really helpful so the families remember to show up because sometimes it gets off their calendar or they forget. So I usually pin this to the student's shirt or just have them walk it in their hands home so they can hand it to their family member as soon as they see them after school. So it just says the student's name that I'll write out and what time their conference is and then it's in our classroom. And then it says to please contact me if something has changed. So I just have a blank copy of those I've already made these. I could have typed all this info in, but I typically just print out a bunch of blank copies and write it in. So I will be filling that out here in just a moment. I need to put those out here so that I can send those home with the families tonight. So after the families and I discuss the quarterly reflection, we get right into academic things. I typically have other reports in here that are academic related. For example, our school has a list of phonological skills that they want students to master by the end of second grade. So if they're still working on those skills, I'll show them that paper. It has like 34 skills. We'll show them where they're at. We also have lists of words that they're supposed to have decoded by the end of second grade. So I'll show them their progress on that. And then I also have the key scores on the front of the conference cover. So down here it will say their computerized score for reading and for math and their target goal score for the end of the year. After we discuss that, I always end by discussing glows and goals. So the glows are usually two things that I'm just really proud of that student for. It could be character related or academic. I try to do one of both. So for this mock student, I put that they were strong in all their academics and that they are a leader among their friends. So one character based thing and one academic thing. And then for a goal, I usually try to pick one goal for each student. So two good things and only one thing for them to really work on. The goal I picked for this mock student was problem solving with their peers. So then I would elaborate on that with the families and give some examples of like, I've noticed whenever we play games in class, they struggle to get along with friends or take turns or whatever the issue might be. I would give them some examples and let the parent comment on if they're seeing that too. And then we might discuss things that we're doing to try to help them with that, like prepping them before a game starts and reminding them of being a good sport and what's most important and things like that so that we can kind of collaborate. To end the conference, if time, I love to ask the families, what are you seeing at home? Do you have any questions or concerns for me? Just to open up that door in case there's something I didn't talk about that's been on their mind or they've been wondering and give them a chance to ask anything they've been wondering about. So that is typically how I end, unless we're short on time, and then I'll typically say, I'm so sorry, we're out of time. If you would email me anything else you think of, I can set up another call or meeting with you. To keep myself on track, that is super important during conferences. Okay, I had to check if I have time to tell you about this, but I do. I use that conference schedule, there it is. So I'll be using this. I keep this everywhere. I keep this by my door so that families know who's up next if they come early. I keep this on my table so that I and the parent meeting with me can see it. And sometimes I even email this to the families so that if they like forgot what time their conference was before they have this, they could at least check the schedule if they were like, wait, what time is my conference? I don't have one tonight. They could look here. So I've done it all different ways. However, I will say if you email it out to the family, sometimes people ask to switch. Like if it'll be like, oh, I noticed you have a 730. Can I switch to that time? And that can get a little confusing. So you may or may not want to email that out depending on how full your schedule is. Like if I email it out today, there might be families that are like, oh, can we switch to Tuesday? And I prefer not just because I've already printed this out and I don't really want to go do that all again. But 
just something to keep in mind. So I'm definitely gonna post that outside my door and keep one here. And I'm gonna go make a couple of copies of this in color, I think. students were on a online learning program I was able to fill out their conference reminder forms and then during my afternoon plan I printed an example of their published writing this was a piece on famous Americans that I included in their folder and then I set out the conference schedule and we were ready to go was not able to show up and I think it's because their child was sick today so I was curious if they would be able to join us or not but I've got some lovely I believe Lebanese food that was delivered to our school our PTA does a great job of providing really yummy food for us on these parent-teacher conference nights so we're gonna eat and enjoy that maybe work on teacher business things while we wait for our next conference that's about 25 minutes away conferences are now over and i am packed up and ready to go I'm not even setting this up at my desk like i usually do because the janitor is sure to pop in any moment and vacuum and i don't want to have to wait till he's finished but in all let me try and flip you around in all conferences went really well all of my families, except for the one whose child was sick today, showed up, so that was great. Actually, there was even another child that was sick, but I had contacted them and the family still came. The child had just had to stay home today. And they were all really good. I love conferences because I do really feel like I learn a lot from the parents' perspective of what's going well, what concerns they have. Sometimes I hear about social issues that I just don't always see in class, and some students are more reserved and don't always bring me issues that are maybe small or minor but it's good to hear some of those from the parent perspective hear what's going on and kind of know what things to touch base on from things that are happening or that they're hearing about at home and how to support those kids best at school and social issues and problem solving which are huge things we're learning about in elementary school so I have some notes of how to move forward and I'm pretty much done with all my spring conferences because I just have one makeup and then one family that I didn't get a conference scheduled with to track down and then we're pretty much done. So that is a wrap. I hope these tips that I've shared were helpful and if you want more I also have a whole blog post on parent-teacher conference tips that might go into more specific detail. If you want to read that I will link it in the description. Thanks for being here. See you next time.